RDF stands for Resource Description Framework. And it's called that because it's a framework for describing resources. Now, that sounds like a pretty dumb thing to say, but let's decompose that a little bit, right? First of all, in computer science jargon, a resource is anything with an address on a network. And that's the sense in which we're using the term resource here, right? Usually we're talking about files on the web, right? Documents out there on the web. But in the world of metadata, those files are referred to as objects, right? They're, for example, a digital photograph of the Mona Lisa, right? The object that lives on, let's say, the Louvre's website, right? That's the network in which in which that object lives, the internet as a whole, right? RDF is a framework. In other words, it's a data model. It's a data model that provides a logic according to which description should be done. And we already talked about what description is back in, in unit one. So resource description framework, right? It is a framework for describing resources. Now think back to the Dublin Core abstract model that we looked at in the previous unit, which is, you'll recall, the logic according to which things are described in Dublin Core. Now the D in RDF means description because descriptive metadata is made up of descriptive statements that you make about a resource. Right, so in the abstract model, what we have is the described resource, which is described using a property value pair, which in the language of Dublin Core is an element and the associated value. In the language of RDF, that is called a triple. which it should be fairly obvious is made up of three things a subject an object and a predicate right the object is the thing that you are making a statement about for example the sky the subject is the characteristic of the object blue for example Right? The predicate, then, is what you're saying about the relationship between the subject and the object, the relationship between the sky and blueness. In other words, color, right? The color of the sky is blue, right? Not the other way around, for example, right? So the object is the resource being described by a metadata record, the subject is the value of that description, and the predicate is the element in the metadata record that establishes what the relationship is between the object and the subject. So let me provide you with an actual concrete example here. Let's say the resource being described is that thing, right? The original painting of the Mona Lisa, a digital photo of the Mona Lisa, etc. Whatever it is, it is a resource. The predicate then is the property or characteristic of the resource that you're specifying, the creator, the date of creation, the title, whatever. And then the subject is the value of that property, right? Leonardo da Vinci, 1503 as the date of creation, Mona Lisa as the title, for example. And these can get as complex as you want, right? The title is the Mona Lisa. The subject is Lisa del Giocondo, who supposedly was the woman who sat for that painting, right? The format is oil paint on poplar wood. The date of creation is 1503, etc., etc. Right? And 
This can get even more complicated because you can have, for example, an entire network of triples. So for example, you could say, right, Leonardo da Vinci was born in 1452. I just looked this up, right? So you have a date, right? For example, a date of birth, and then you could have another date which is, you know, date of death. And I think you can see easily that you can create very large, very complex networks of triples between objects and subjects, and the subject can be the object of one triple and the subject of another, right? Leonardo da Vinci is both the subject and the object of different triples in this figure, right? The fact that you can have multiple triples with the same object, as is the case here with the Mona Lisa, plays out in the dumb down and repeatability principles in Dublin Core, right? You use whatever elements you need to describe a resource, and you don't use the ones you don't need. And you can use elements as many times as you want with different associated values to them, right? So to reiterate all of this in metadata terms, the object is the resource being described by the metadata record. The predicate is an element in that record, and the subject is the value assigned to that element. Now, what this might look like in an RDF document is this, and this is a very simple RDF document just for the sake of example that I've created. So first, you declare that it is an XML document then you declare the top level of RD, the RDF document. You point to two namespaces, right? the RDF namespace, and in this case, the Dublin Core namespace, which we've looked at that file already, resolves to the DCMI terms file. Then we declare that this is a RDF description about the following resource, and this is just an example. There's not any you know, real file at this address, but let's just say we're describing a you know, TIFF file called monalisa.tiff. We have the Dublin Core title and the value, the Dublin Core creator and the value, etc. And you can have as many of these as you want. So that is a very simple RDF file that corresponds to that diagram on the previous slide. So this is a very simple introduction to RDF. The structure of RDF should feel familiar to you because RDF came first and Dublin Core and the Dublin Core abstract model was built on the logical structure of subject object predicate that had been hashed out with the development of RDF. So that triple structure is built in to the Dublin Core abstract model. The idea is that things have properties, those properties have values, and things can be described by making statements that specify those properties and values with reference to the thing they're describing. 